Hello and welcome to this Taste Challenge. Let's hang out on airs live. Today, we have from 1876, not this particular bottle. This bottle is from Houston and from the year 2019. Best before April 10th, 2019. Okay. It's got the best by date, guys. Brewed with 100% renewable electricity from wind power. See, that's why when you drive through Texas, now you can see all that ugly, those ugly fields of windmills, wind farms. Instead of looking at nature, that's how we save the earth, by destroying the earth. We must first destroy it in order to save it. And then also help a lot of companies that are juiced into the, with the government. Okay, anyway, 5% alcohol, brewed with rice as the adjunct. And we're gonna go up against, well, let me pour this. Nice smoke, that light straw, rice, cooked rice appearance. It just looks like it almost. Um, Put this back in the refrigerator. I don't want them to warm. These beers are not designed to drink warm. You say, well, I had John Courage Russian Imperial Stout and it was better when it warmed. So that means that stuff's bad. John Courage Imperial Stout is a different style of beer. Russian Imperial Stout. So you see that greenish gold kind of thing? Look at those bubbles racing. rice lager bush i could have gotten bottles but the cans were a month fresher and i said yeah i'm gonna go with the fresh thing in my for my preference same price cans of bottles but um a, a fresh is best with these you say yeah but i bought a kbs in 2001 and i'm still aging it and it gets better as it ages it's a different style of beer, really. Okay, it's a flavored malt beverage, <laughs> as it says on the bottle. Brewed from water, barley malt, cereal grains. You say, what cereal grains? Rice and corn. And corn syrup, too. 4.3% alcohol. They could have delivered that big barrel of corn syrup to this castle. Best by May 20th, 2019. Okay, y'all go back in the fridge. I'll uh, just leave the camera on. All right. It's gold pale. Doesn't have that greenish gold thing. Um, I know some, maybe I'm gonna read the comments, but a com, somebody might have already said, hey, I'm in Canada, it's 4.7 here. I know that. I wish it was still 4.9 here. I think in 96 it was 4.9, but they slowly dropped it and I don't know why. I guess they figured people would notice. At first, actually I didn't notice it was 4.9 and if I recall right, if I recall correctly, over those 20 years or 18 years, it was 4.9, then it was 4.8, and then it was 4.6. Yeah, that's right. And then one day I noticed, when it got to 4.3, I noticed that I said, hold on a minute. Why is this so low alcohol? I knew it was higher, and I went look at my records, and it certainly used to be high. Now, there must be a reasoning behind that, dropping it to 4.3. You might have a theory, you can post a comment. I'd be curious to read your theory. But it certainly was dropped out. So Bush has different ABV in different parts of the world. Budweiser is 4.8 in merry old nanny state, I mean, merry old England, because they wanna take care of their people and control their lives. I mean, they want to, uh, yeah, that's right, control their lives. You say the United States does. We're not as far advanced along this the nanny state scale, but we're getting there. You say, well, we need a police state to protect us from ourselves and to send us away for 10 years if we repost a 
uh, some long writing, written statement that says bad things because we must be protect. And free speech doesn't matter anyway. I would argue against you. I would say no, free speech is more important than protecting us from ourselves. But anyway, so it it was five percent in merry old nanny state. I mean, merry old England, but they dropped it because they said too many people were drinking too many strong beers and smoking too much and having a bad attitude. Now, will I be able to tell these apart? I do believe so. And uh, I'm gonna start right now and then I'll read the comments. Well, it smells sweet. Not sweet like uh, a lemonade or, or a Mexican Coke, Coca-Cola. I mean, sweet like a lager, American lager beer, sweet-ish grain sugar thing. <clears throat> like sweet corn, something. Grain. This is a multi-grain beer. Barley, corn, and rice. And if you go to the health food store, don't they sell you multi-grain cereal to eat? Why wouldn't you want to drink a multi-grain beer? Now over here, it smells dry. It smells oh so dry. You say, how does it smell dry, you fool? Because it just does smell dry. I can hear colors and see sounds, OK? I can, th I, I can see through mountains. Watch me disappear. I, I can even touch the sky. I swallow colors of the sounds I hear. Now, so it smells dry. It smells rice. It smells like, you know what it smells like? It smells like cooked rice, verdant rice, cooked verdant rice. That means green rice, not dry. That's what they use in the Budweiss, the Budweiss. Oh, the body seems like, this seems like, well, this is going to be a problem because, you know, Budweiser is kind of light itself. Budweiser is kind of light itself and the finish is dry. Oh, so very dry, but it's got that 5%. Oh, bazam, drank a few Budweiser's. You're going to be chilling, drinking the bud, and then somebody's going to call you and say, what's up? And then you'll call you and say, what's up? And then the other guy will say, what's up? That's what will happen. You will see frogs in the swamp. You will see geckos. All right. So very pleasant, very mild, very drinkable. Now, some people would take exception to that and say it's not a good beer by what you just said, because beer is not about being drinkable. Uh, I understand that viewpoint. They say beer is about being flavorful and big and 12 to 15% alcohol and having a body thicker than pins oil. That's what beer is about. You paid what? What he paid? Champagne. Champagne cocktails for that Budweiser. I paid $22.12. For that one 22 ounce bottle of Imperial airplane spaceship stout. And I'm not even drinking it because I'm saving it. I'm going to trade it. But at a horse blanket, uh, what's that called? Horse blanket football pennant um, farmhouse icebox. There's only 13 in the planet. And mine signed by the brewmaster. And I, I it, look, I applaud that and I respect that. And I support that. And I don't say you're bad for drinking it or, I mean, saving it, trading it, having a beer museum. I'm just saying me, that's me, pedestrian old working class hero me. A working class hero is something to be. All right. But anyway, 
<clears throat> this one is so dry too. Now I thought, I thought. See, I thought Budweiser was going to be just like head and show, head and shoulders above Bush, just going to be a runaway, like Lita Ford and Joan Jett. Jackie Fox is just gonna be a runaway, you know. Um, but it's not. I was gonna make the statement like, yeah, this thing is worth two dollars more a six pack. It's so obviously better. Now I should have bought the football pennant horse blanket ice box. Why did I have to? All right. Mm. All those theories that I laughed at, that I ridiculed, that I made fun of, that I looked down upon. All of those. But yet, they were right. And I was wrong. But not so fast, not so fast, not so fast, Buffalo Bulls. You haven't beaten Duke yet, and I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> this beer has a lot of character, and it has sweet grains, and it has a little of that whatever, the hops, they use the strissel spalt and the Tetnang, Tetnanger, and the Moravian barley. All of that. I like all of that. And the two row and six row barley. But I think. That's the Budweiser. You say, why? Why do you think that's the Budweiser? Because you're not afraid. I think it's the Bud. I think it's the Budweiser because it has that peculiar rice, cooked rice flavor. It has the most crisp finish on the planet. On the planet. It has a cleanness that is remarkably, <laughs> remarkably clean. <laughs> and uh, it has that strange sensation of somebody hitting you in the forehead with an ice pick. Like if you drank too many of these, you would just have a very dirty hangover the next day, a nasty hangover, a rough and rough, a dirty hangover, very bad. So it's like weaponized. It's like a weaponized product. And it has some kind of, you say, you're just being silly. No, it, I, I am to an extent. But it has some kind of savoir faire that brings it up. And you say, yeah, 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 yeah. I would pay $2 more for 12 pack. I would. Because it's got this. <sighs> regal, royal, monarchial, king of beers type quality to it. Like you drink it, you say, this is the king of beer. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then the other one, you say, it's good, you know, but it's more like there is some budget beer character to it that you almost can't describe. I know it was introduced in 1955. It went national in 1979. They introduced the light beer version in 1989 which originally was cold filtered. I know they introduced the bud, the bush ice, <clears throat> excuse me. They're very carbonated in um, 1994. And there's a bush non-alcoholic. Um, but there is some kind of indescribable budget, but, but I 
I'm the first person that would jump in line to drink a budget beer. I mean, I'm not saying that unless it was maybe maybe uh, Milwaukee Special Reserve Light or Beer 30 Premium. Okay, but let's see what the comments say, and then I'm going to reveal it, and for better or worse. Milwaukee Special Reserve Light. No, no, I forgot to mute the channel. Okay, so I'll put a link to our beers, Bush. Bush. Bush is made with the finest ingredients, they say. I didn't say that. Including a blend of premium hops. Like I was telling you, that Strissel Spalt and Harold Tetning. I wrote it all down in my notes. I could look it up for you if you needed me to. Back when they used to list them on the website, exceptional barley malt. You say, how do you know that? Well, they're saying it's exceptional. <laughs> Fine grains like corn and corn syrup and rice. Crisp water. Don't you want to drink crisp water, damn it? This recipe delivers a ref refreshingly smooth taste. Should have a hyphen there, but that's okay. And they, 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 they're, they're not gra gra grammatical experts. They're beer masters, not grammatical experts. And easy finish. Should have a comma too, but... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not a grammatical expert either. Not a comma. Okay, all right. I'll retract that. 114 calories. That's very low. 4.3% alcohol. That's very low. It's barely, it's barely a premium beer. It's almost a light. You could argue it is a light beer. All right. Budweiser. Medium body. Yes. Flavorful. Yes. Crisp American style lager. Yes. Brewed with the best barley malt. Well, that's what they're saying. I don't know if it's the best. They have a lot of money. The company's rich. Eh, it's probably the best because they can probably squeeze people. Like, oh, we want the best. We want the best. You lose the contract. Okay, we'll do it. We better not see those Miller people over here again. All right. A blend of premium hot varieties. That's right. And it is an icon of core American values like optimism and celebration. And, and, and I'm going to add some things to this. And horses and frogs and geckos. And Lou Rawls and um, making commercials, ridiculing the competition, all of that. Okay, 5% alcohol, 145 calories, still not high. <laughs> You say, hey, you know, it's the king of beers. Says right there, the king of beers. Would they lie? She's a beauty. It's one in a million beers. All right. Well, if I'm wrong here, you say, keep stalling, keep stalling, because you're scared, huh? I'm not too scared. I'm a little scared. All right. Here's the, here's the, I'm about to say, here's the reviews. Yeah, here's the review. Here's the comments. I love both these beers, it says Heath Tucker. Bud has a better flavor to me. Bush reminds me more of a, a light beer. Can't go wrong with either. Clink in the mugs. Cheers. I'll go on that. Backwoods Billy from the Eastern Shore, Maryland. Hello, Backwoods Billy. Bush has a lighter flavor. Additionally, Bush uses corn as an adjunct ingredient and rice <laughs> versus Bud. I said add, add, I'm saying and rice because they do. Versus Bud, which as typical of Anheuser-Busch and Bev uses rice. For Bush, they used corn. Well, they actually use corn and rice for bush. I sent you that link. Remember I showed you the link on my comments? And you were saying, no, 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 no rice. And I'm saying, yes, yes, yes. But if y'all insist, I'll look it up. OMG. Oh, my goodness. No farmhouse funk ales, says Backwoods Billy. Thomas Hamilton says, quote, whatever. All right. Uh, Backwoods Billy said, bush is lighter in body and also sweeter, but also is slightly drier due to rice and beechwood aging. Okay. Although now done on staves and stainless tanks. Yes, I saw those. I saw those. Not as woody. I saw those. Did you hard pour, Jay? <laughs> not in these little, not in these little Diamore glasses. I watched your video. I'm a straight in poor guy, okay? Me and Billy are no longer friends because we, hey, how, how are you going to be friends with somebody if they pour their beer at an angle and you pour it straight in? I mean, the beer community could tell you that. That's how you cut people off. Well, okay. GNJK would hope Bud wins just based on the price. Back, Billy says GNJK depends on your taste. 
Taste. Wait a minute. Are y'all saying that taste is important with beer? <sighs> I said no rice as to it has corn in it. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to turn that over to you and let you hash it out with Anheuser Busch and Dove, okay? I can only do that. That's all I can do. I can't go any further cuz there's nothing more I can do. I'd like to go to the Eastern Shore of Maryland someday. Did I ever go there? Oh, I did. When I was passing from Delaware, we had to go down. And then they had that little tip of Virginia. We had to drive and they had that bridge tunnel uh, combination uh, thing. It was like partly bridge and part tunnel. I kind of like that. So let's go to Bush on tap, tap into your beer. Ingredients. Now, this is not me talking. This is Anheuser-Busch InBev talking, or the Anheuser-Busch, a wholly owned subsidiary of InBev, Anheuser-Busch InBev. Ingredients, water. I'm going to quote, quote, ingredients, water, and there are semicolons separating them, corn, barley malt, rice, corn syrup, hops, hop extract, and malt extract. I'll repeat it one more time. Water, corn, barley malt, rice, corn syrup, hops, hop extract, and malt extract, unquote. That's a primary source. I can do no more than that. If that is incorrect, you will have to show me that Anheuser-Busch InBev has listed the wrong ingredients on their website. That's all I can do. I would choose natural light over Bush based off of flavor and price. Oh, yeah. Natural light. I wish they still made that natural pre uh, uh, pilsner. I guess that didn't sell too well. I never saw it in a store. Backwood said, Billy said, the pour is 45 degrees according to the BJCP. Yes, but according to other sources, it's straight in. Which has the beer judge certification program contest? That's true. They do have that. Billy said, no, I said Bush has corn. And not that they do not use rice. Oh, okay. I didn't understand what you were saying. I'm sorry. I thought you were saying that it uses exclusively corn and not rice. Retraction. If I'm wrong, I'll be the first to admit. I just didn't understand. I was confused. Fair enough. Billy said, Genesee is my choice for a lager due to price. Yeah, sadly, we can't get Genesee here, Billy. Billy, oh, by the way, you're always welcome to come on these hangouts. You can join, you know, and do these hangouts with us anytime you want. Always welcome. You can join the International Beer Review Guild. If you're on Facebook, you can join Beer Talk 2019. Join anytime you have an open invitation. There's no restriction on you joining. Absolutely none. And, and that is an absolute fact. And other people have asked, can I join? I'll say, yep, Shane join. Others have joined. Okay, here we go. Please be Budweiser. Oh, Lord. <laughs> well, time to drink. I got a lot of thinking and drinking to do. Hold on. I don't know what's happening over here. Billy said, thanks. Thomas Hamilton said, face with sunglasses, face with sunglasses, and a shock face. I was, I was pretty confident, man. Man, Bush Beer is some kind of like secret agent. Bush Beer is like a secret agent because here it is. Over here, all low profile being poured in the glass, mimicking Budweiser, making me think it's Budweiser with its super crisp finish, looking all Budweiser-ish, costing $2 less per 12-pack, if not more, if not more than $2 le less per 12-pack. Screwing up my whole taste challenge. Thank you, Bush. 
I want to I want to thank Bush Beer. I want to thank the Bush Beer brand for tasting better than Budweiser and making me look stupid on the internet. Making me embarrassed. Making me look ridiculous. And a man in my position can't afford to look ridiculous. Now I want to say to Budweiser, you get the hell out of here. Okay, look. That's the problem with these live taste challenges. You go on there and you take this big risk. And then, then what you're going to do? Delete it? And people will say, oh, no, 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 you deleted it. You were wrong. You tried to cover it up. I should do like, I should just record these things in front of a camera. If I'm wrong, I could delete it. You'd never know the thing was recorded. And then I could get on there. And once I got it right, I might do six takes. Once I got it right, I could post it and say, look at me. I, 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 I ought to be in a contest. I have some kind of great skill. You might be saying, wait a minute. Oh, I see other people doing that. I didn't say they took multiple takes. I just said it could be done. If you do it live, how are you going to weasel out of it? You say, no, there's some kind of way to cheat with the tags. Somebody told me that, like, you're cheating. With... I don't know how you could do that, but it seemed to me if I was cheating, I'd be winning all the time, not losing. Heath said, my method of pouring is similar to what Fred No says at Jim Bean when asked how to drink bourbon any damn way you want. <laughs> That's a good point. Jason Baccaro says, Mountain Stream cold. Keith Tucker says, so I pour straight in. Jason says, I don't mind Bush or Bush Light for the price. It's not bad. Bush Walker says, remember the hangovers with Budweiser. Oh, right. But now I don't care. I'm so depressed now. I don't even care. That is Budweiser. Damn. I feel like... I feel like Florida Evans right now. Damn, damn, damn. Bush Walker said, I remember the hangovers with Budweiser. Spiked mineral water, says Jason. Might be spiked mineral water, but it sure is good spiked mineral water. I must like spiked mineral water. People might say, you just drinking yellow fizzy stuff. Mineral water beer. On alcohol eggs, we had a few people saying, that ain't even real beer. But then everybody ignored them, and I think they quit the group. Nobody took the bait. I thought to myself, you're in the wrong group. I dump all my beers into a frozen glass. Thomas Hamilton says, peace, man. That Billy says, when you come down to the Del Marva, you mean when I go up? <laughs> I gotta go northeast up on that. I mean, let me know in advance and we can get together and hit a few good craft breweries like Revelation Craft Brewing Company and Three Bronze Metals. Yes, I will certainly let you know if I ever go up there. It's kind of out of the way. Now I know you're gonna say, well, damn, you think St. John the Baptist Parish is in the way? No, I I'm not saying that. We're kind of on the route though. We're on the main highway between uh, New Orleans and Baton Rouge and Houston, New Orleans, Baton Rouge, Houston, Jacksonville, San Antonio, Mobile, you know what I mean, Tallahassee. So it's kind of easy to get here. Got to go through here to get from Chicago to New Orleans, St. Louis to New Orleans. But I, I mean, I'm not opposed to going to a place like the Del Mar for sure. I would go there. I like to go to places like that. I actually like to go to places like that. World Cup of beer, but still a good beer. I pour, I pour straight in based on a more taste idea. I think it real and it works. And it gets rid of the carbonation. That's what Anheuser Bush says. They have videos. Anheuser Bush, you can actually look at videos where they show pour it straight in. It makes a big head. It's going to dissipate pretty fast anyway. And it's going to release all that carbonation. You're not going to feel bloated. I agree with that. Uh, I'm going to get Genesee Cream Ale right now. Cheers. Oh, man. I would go buy it right now, too, if I could get it in Louisiana Boot Camp. <clears throat> now, Billy says the straight in pour is incorrect. In accordance to the BJCP and American and European Brewers Association. That's true. According to them, there's only one little problem. I think they're wrong. Okay. And they have a right to be wrong. I mean, it's no big deal. I, I like the BJCP and I like the European Brewers Association. 
I really like those guys. However, we just made a big mistake on the pouring, but it's not a big problem. Genesee is awesome. We are in the sticks in an agricultural coastal area. Yeah, but don't say it like that. That's a historic part of the United States. So right out there by the Atlantic Ocean, on the west side of the Atlantic Ocean. Oh, yeah. Delaware, Maryland, Virginia. Got a university, University of Maryland, Eastern Shore, University of Delaware, Delaware State University. All of that. Well, I never would have thought this would happen. I mean, I would have paid money. I'd have bet. But I'm not, I'm not a better. We retired down here. It's the country. Yep, three states, Delaware, Maryland, and Virginia. Jason says, curious, have you ever seen How Beer Saved the World? Really cool documentary. I've heard about it. Never seen it. Well, look, y'all, I'm going to get off of this. I never would have dreamed. I wouldn't have. I mean, I would have paid money. I would have said, uh -uh, I'm betting you. There is no way. And I mean, no way. Bush is going to beat Budweiser. But I've had people over the years, 23 years, warn me, watch out. Watch out. You could get, you could get fooled. You're going to feel foolish. Pro uh, overconfidence is an obstacle to problem solving. Was I overconfident? Uh, obviously. But did I think I was overconfident? No. Back Back was Billy said he came from Annapolis. Oh, the capital, home of the U.S. Naval Academy. Well, huh. I've never been there. I wanted to go and I, something happened. I didn't make it. We were there. We were close. We should have gone. I was stupid not to go. I don't even have words. I mean, I just, I don't know what to say. It just, it happened. I thought this was going to be a snap. I said, well, this would be a taste challenge, so-called. But it's going to be a, a snap. I'm going to blow through it. There'll be some comments. People will watch, and uh, Budweiser will kill it. And I'll be talking trash about Budweiser, the king of beer. Bush, Bush is a budget brand and all of this. But then go back and watch the video. <laughs> Woo. All right. Yikes. Now, would I like to try the Chinese Budweiser's? Like, these are official beers from Budweiser China. Yeah, I would like to try. There's like 10 different ones. The Budweiser General Beer, I think it's called. Or is that Paps General? There's like a bunch of Paps beers, too. Budweiser something. Degree Plato. This other Budweiser. This other Degree Plato. This other Budweiser. Other Degree Plato. Budweiser. Other Degree Plato. And uh, there was all these, like, Budweiser Dark in these other countries. So I said, Budweiser Dark. Budweiser, uh, what was it called? Budweiser in India. They had Budweiser Maximus. It's like an 8%. I'm not joking. I swear. I'm not kidding. Can't, Bush is a better price anyway. China is the largest market for beer. I believe that. And I was told that East Asia is the largest market for cognac and brandy. They love cognac and brandy. And it's funny because brandy and cognac is made in Europe, but they don't drink much of it in Europe. I was talking to somebody who lives in France or sometimes lives in France. And she said, yeah, I mean, nobody over here drinks that. She says, sometimes you go to a bar and it'd be some old men drinking cognac, but really nobody drinks that over here. <laughs> They just sell it to gullible people. All right. Would I would I give Budweiser and Bush a good score? Sure. After all, I've been drinking them for 23 years. They're very crisp and refreshing. I couldn't tell them apart. That's either an indictment against me or an indictment against Budweiser and Bush. I don't know who it's an indictment against. Maybe I'm not good at te telling beers apart. That's a strong possibility. 
Another strong possibility is that Bush is just as good as Budweiser, regardless of price, and it might be a better choice. Uh, what if I decided? I really, I don't know. I don't know. Would I do another taste challenge with these two beers? I would. And in fact, you say, I know it's coming. Yeah, I plan to do it. I plan to do it. TLC69 says, so that's like people in Kentucky not drinking bourbon. Ha ha. Yeah, I don't think that's the case from what I noticed at liquor stores. Budweiser reserved the bourbon barrel aged for one year aged on vanilla beans and in bourbon barrel aged. Best barrel aged beer. Blue Goose Island barrel aged away and cheaper. That really was very good. I agree with that. The Budweiser bourbon barrel aged for a year, aged on vanilla beans and, a, and in a bourbon barrel. Yeah. That was in that, was it in the second Brewmasters, which didn't last long or something? Hams versus Budweiser versus Pap, says Bushwalker. Have a good rest of the day, Jay, says Josh. I will try. Jason says for the calories, the carbs, the price, and his refreshing light taste for a light beer, I'd give Bush Light a four out of five. I, uh, I got to tell y'all something. <laughs> I'm planning to do some light beer challenges coming up, and that ain't no joke. Sure like the Bush signature, Ronald. Yeah, everybody loved it, but that's why they got rid of it, because it was too good, maybe. maybe, maybe. They decided, well... Bush Signature Copper Lager is the best beer we've made in 20 years. Let's get rid of it and not promote it. Oh, so they did it. Jason, I keep forgetting you're not doing Bush Light. I'm drinking one now, so I got a little mixed up. Yeah, I'm drinking regular old Bush, which is kind of like Bush Light. All right, last one, the fourth one. On Bourbon Barrel Stage, Jim Bean White Label, bud. <clears throat> I have some Jim Bean in my cabinet. It's a Jim Beam uh, non-chill filtered, which I got at Walmart for an unusually cheap price, less than 13 bucks. So I was like, oh, bazam. Jeremy said, did I miss the winner? Yeah, you missed the winner, all right. And you missed me making a fool out of myself. I picked Bush, and I thought it was Budweiser. And I was talking for 10 minutes about how Budweiser was so much better. And then I looked at the label, and I said, oh. <gasps> How can I delete the video with nobody noticing? But it was too late because too many people watched. I couldn't tell them apart. I thought Budweiser was Bush, and I thought Bush was Budweiser. Scary. Would be nice if they still sold the Red Dog. Wouldn't it be nice? Once again, you see the problem? You say, oh, because Miller uses five different barley malts and what, like six different hops to make Red Dog? Can't sell that. Got too much flavor. They're insane. Can't sell Bush Copper Lager. Got too much flavor. Can't sell Michelob. I'm not talking about Michelob Ultra. You know, most people you talk to that are not 45 years or older, they say, man, I love Michelob. And I'm like, you remember those old commercials in the 80s? And they're like, what are you talking about? I was like, you know, weekends are made for Michelob. Weekends are made for having friends. Then you got them, you know what I mean? They don't know what you're talking about. I said, you know, Michelob, Michelob. Yeah, I drank that. That's my favorite beer. I say, you're talking about Michelob Ultra, huh? Yeah. I say, look, let me tell you a story. <laughs> let me tell you a story about a man named Jed, you know, and they, I said, come on, come on and sit down by me by, by the chair, and I'm gonna tell you a story about Michelob. And they're like, what do you mean? I'm like, yeah, there's something more different than the Michelob Ultra. They're like, I don't understand. I'm confused. I'm, you know, I'm confused. I'm like, look. 
They used to make a beer called Michelob that was way better than everything else they made. Then they made Michelob Special Dark, and they made Michelob Dry, and they made Michelob Amberbach, and then they got scared, and they made sure nobody could get it. All right. Josh B says, I hope Occulto stays gone, the worst beer I ever had. It's not the worst beer I ever had because it's nothing like Camo. If you drank Camo, you would think Occulto was one of the best beers I've, you ever had. But o Occulto was horrible. And I'm glad it's gone and I hated it. All right. Uh, tastes, he said it tastes like tequila. Well, that doesn't mean it was bad because, you know, they got a lot of people that love tequila. All right. Something new down here at Ronald Patagonia. Patagonia? Josh B says a culture was brewed with lavender, which gave it a soap like taste. I don't know what it was, but it was a bad taste to me. I gave it a fair rating, but that was an oddball item. If they ever had an oddball item and it lasted pop, it stayed popular for about a month, which meant for everybody to buy a six pack and try it. And there was no repurchases, including me. And that it was gone. But apparently they still make Cubanisto. The European version of it, Cubanisto. Well, I'm going to let them drink the Cubanisto. All right. Well, that's it. This is over. I'm embarrassed, but that's the way it goes. And I'm going to do it. I'm not going to give up on taste challenges. You got to take the risk and take the heat. But that's, all, that's the way it goes. Tomorrow, I'm going to do a, a, a whiskey taste challenge. I've got um, Clay McGregor versus Sir Malcolm. Blended Scotch whiskey. Now, some viewers are saying, oh, wow, great. All right. Okay. But I think Clay McGregor is going to destroy Sir Malcolm. Time will tell. And not that much time. Thanks for watching this video production.